blessing I've had in my life. Most compassionate and caring people I've ever known. And I miss you all. I can't wait until the time when we can hug again. Bye. I'm waiting. Good morning. I'm Donna Hester, pastor of Kern Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are for this Easter service as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Eternal hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. Another is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. My name is Ray Penn. I'll be reading from the Revised Standard Version, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message which I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scripture, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Alleluia. We give thanks to you, gracious God for the ways in which you have been with us this week. As we gather this morning at the empty tomb, we come to know your words that you love us. You love us so much that you gave your son. And through your gift, we acknowledge the receiving of eternal life, everlasting life. And we are so thankful for the ways in which you care for us, the ways in which you sustain us, and the ways in which you call us. We have heard the stories. We have heard the stories of those who gathered at the tomb on this morning. And as we join them, we join them to hear your word, to hear your call as we go forth into the world as your messengers, as your children. And as we come, we come with such thanksgiving this morning, and yet we also come with our cares and our concerns. And we offer them to you as we pray for those who are hurting and sick, as we pray for those who grieve this day, as we pray for those who are anxious and struggling, as we pray for those who cannot find their way. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear our prayers and make yourself known to those whom we lift before you that they too might know of your love and your care and your constant attendance. 
We offer these prayers in the name of the one who is our risen Lord and who also taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering this morning, we want to remember our Lenten and our Easter offerings as we have shared our abundance, as we have realized the abundance that we have throughout the Lenten season and share that abundance with Holston Home for Children. Due to the ways in which we are now giving our offering, we will hold our offerings for about a week, week and a half before we tally them and send them to Holston Home. So you still have time to get in your offerings through the mail through the drop slot in the narthex door or through electronic giving. We remember the, all of our abundance and we share that with Holston Home. We also use these same methods as well as IRAs, the giving through them and through stocks as we bring our general tithes to the church. With, the com with compassion for our needs, the risen one stands beside us, calling our names. With the same mercy, let us bring forth our tithes and offerings to relieve the suffering of this world and to proclaim far and wide good news of the resurrection life. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Let us pray. Gracious God, we offer these our gifts to you. We offer these gifts for Holston Home as well. For all the gifts we offer, we pray that your kingdom might be made known to the world and that your message might be spread far and wide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, and I will be reading from the Common English Bible. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe, seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, 
don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here we are, back in the Gospel of Mark. We know that Mark has brevity. Mark hits his point and doesn't put much else with it. And we have a story. A story that in one sense is a very familiar story. And a story in another sense that's lacking something. We know the stories as we've kind of enmeshed and put them together from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and especially we're familiar with the resurrection story as the Gospel of John tells it. And we have this accounting from the Gospel of Mark this morning, and it ends abruptly. It ends with a d command. It ends with an action, but it's not the action we expect. The women have made their way to the tomb. They have the spices. They're off to do their duty in anointing the body, preparing the body for death as it was left undone due to the Sabbath. They're concerned about this tomb being sealed with the stone. They look up and that's not a problem. They enter into the tomb and they do not find what they expect. They expect for there to be a body to prepare. And instead, there's a man dressed in a white robe telling them not to be startled. Do not be afraid. And then tells them, that while they're looking for Jesus, while they're looking for the one who has been crucified, he's not there. And they're to go. They're to go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of them to Galilee. Probably in all of Jesus' teachings about what was to come, they either knew a place in Galilee that they were to meet, or there was some place that they always went to when they were in Galilee. And it would have been easy for them to know where they were being sent. But they're told to go. They're told to give this message to the disciples and especially to Peter. But they're overcome with terror and dread. And they leave the tomb. They leave the tomb and they say nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Fear. The fear that they were told not to have by 
the one dressed in white in the tomb consumes them. And in their fear, we're told that they say nothing to anyone. And that's the end of Mark's gospel. Or the end of Mark's gospel as it was originally written. We discussed Wednesday on Get Ready for Sunday about the two additional endings the shorter ending and the longer ending for the Gospel of Mark. And if you want to review or you want to know more about that, I would refer you to that recording from Wednesday night. But this morning I want to look at the fact that the women left. The women left and they said nothing It does not appear as the abrupt ending of Mark gives us that they went and found the disciples. That they went and they found Peter especially to give him the message to go to Galilee. In the other Gospels, we know about the movement and what happens after The tomb is found empty. But in the Gospel of Mark, the tomb is empty. And we don't know where the story goes from there. There are a lot of theories. There are many reasons. And yet, thinking about... Mark. And thinking about the way Mark begins the story. Mark begins the story with Jesus' ministry. There's no birth narrative. There's no what we consider Christmas. Jesus just starts his ministry. And then at the end, it just ends with an empty tomb. I wonder, I wonder if Mark really did this for a reason. We want a nice ending that's all tied up and ready and packaged with a happy ending. But I wonder, was this done on purpose as Mark wrote the gospel? Because you see, as Mark leaves the gospel, he leaves it as a never-ending story. The story does not come to a nice, tidy conclusion. The story goes on. And the story goes on. And the story goes on. And the story has gone on for thousands of years. It's obvious. Partly due to the other Gospels, but by the fact that we know the story today. It's obvious that at some point, the fear subsided in the women... Faith took hold. They realized those teachings and those stories that Jesus had told all led up to that moment. At some point, they probably gathered and said, Remember when Jesus said, Remember how Jesus said he would rise? It's happened. That man at the tomb told us to go and tell the disciples and Peter what had happened. And that fear turned to faith. 
And some time after they had left that tomb, they said something. They most likely said it to Peter and the disciples. And probably after that, they said it to a lot of other people. There was a moment, a moment in which we do not have recorded by the Gospel of Mark that fear turned to faith. Fear turned to an understanding of what they had been taught. Fear turned to excitement. That indeed the tomb was empty. And that never ending story continued. That never ending story had a very personal ending. For those women, we find ourselves all these years later in the same situation. We this morning come acknowledging that the tomb once again is empty. We come knowing that Jesus of Nazareth has taught us, has told us over and over again, along with this young man in the tomb in white, do not be afraid. Let go of your fear. Put aside your fear and live by faith. And then in one way or another, there has been that message. That message to go and tell someone. Maybe especially someone about what you have experienced. What you have experienced in the empty tomb or what you have experienced in a relationship with the risen Savior. And we too are called to go to tell, to tell what's happening. And what do we do? Sometimes just like those women, we say nothing. We're overcome with terror, dread, fear, and we go the other way. But at some point, at some point just like those women, our fear turns to faith. Our fear turns to an understanding of all that Jesus has taught us. Our fear turns to an understanding and a recognition that we need to tell the one that we have been called, the one that we have been told to go and tell. This morning, just as the women exited the tomb, as the women stood there and then fled from there, they said nothing. What is your inclination this morning? Is it to say nothing? Take heart, because if that is your inclination, we know that at some point in time, that fear, that terror and dread turned to faith, turned to an understanding 
of how one should share this very important message. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And let me tell you how that risen Christ has met me and called and told me to tell you. And we share the story. A story that overall does not have a neat, tidy ending but has an ending for the ages, an ending forever, an ending that is different for you and for me, but an ending that calls us to understand the saving grace, the love and care that we indeed are given through the empty tomb. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for all the ways in which you call us. We thank you for the ways in which you care for us. And we thank you for your patience your patience in the time it takes for our fear to turn to faith. Bless us that as our faith takes hold, that we are able to continue the story, to share the story, and to share of your love as it is known through the empty tomb. Amen. See the tomb where he lay. See the stone rolled away. He is risen. He is risen. He's alive. Scars and believe he is risen, he is risen, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. He lives, all honor and power are his. All glory forever. song of the redeemed. He is moving, he is moving, he's alive. Take this freedom, take this love, can you feel it rising up? He is here, he is here, he's alive.
blessing. Christ is risen and goes before us into this world of fear and pain. Christ has called us to bring the good news of healing, hope, and redemption. Go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you, now and forever. Amen.